It's a pack attack in the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. With the division already won, Green Bay pounced on Tennessee early and often. The Packers finally looking like the team of old. In the desert, the Bears pick up a much needed win to boost their playoff hopes. Adrian Peterson kept quiet in Houston to put the rushing record aside. The Vikings are playing some pretty good football. Just ask the Texans. On the college basketball court, Northern Iowa wraps up the non-conference slate with a huge win over St. Mary's. And with the Hawkeyes' non-conference schedule also in the books, what are the Hawks saying about their next opponent, Indiana? Yes, there are other shows on, but this is better. Fox 28 Sports Sunday starts right now. It's starting to get good on the gridiron, right? A pleasant good evening. I'm Landon Stoller. Welcome to Fox 28 Sports Sunday. And this time of year, Sunday is all about the National Football League. Week 16 almost in the books, and the playoff pictures are starting to clear up. The Green Bay Packers have already wrapped up the NFC North title for the second straight season, but getting there this year, not as easy as it was in 2011. Today, though, the pack looked like the attack of seasons past. The Packers and their elegantly dressed fans still hoping to get a first round by work to do to get that though but they were doing work today against Tennessee first quarter the pack already up seven nothing Aaron Rodgers off play action he finds his bestest friend in the whole wide world that's Randall Cobb it's a beautifully placed football 20 yard touchdown Packers up 14 zip early on but it wasn't just the offense defense doing their part as well Clay Matthews yeah he's back from injury storms through the line to get to Chris Johnson Speaking of injuries, though, Johnson injures his ankle on that play. Not good news for the, te for the Tennessee Titans. He would turn later in the second quarter. More from the Packer D. Time winding down in the first. Jake Locker trying to make something happen. This isn't what he was trying to make happen. Eric Walden picks off Locker after it goes through the arms of his intended receiver, Damian Williams. Nice return, and the Pack faithful enjoying the show. That would continue in the second half. Ruan Harris with the 7-yard touchdown run. Now, you know things are going well for Green Bay when Ruan Harris is scoring touchdowns. Take a Lambeau leap. You deserve it. 27-0 Green Bay. Back to the defense. It's the other guy with long blonde hair in the Packer linebacking core. A.J. Hawk untouched on the blitz up the middle. Sacks locker. It's all Green Bay. And they just simply wouldn't let up in this one. We're still in the third. The screen to Greg Jennings makes his man miss. There's another score. It's ludicrous speed for the pack at this point. It's not even fair. 34 nothing. One more for good measure. Why not? In the fourth, Rodgers. It's James Jones. 12 yards for Rodgers. Third touchdown of the day. Packers roll 55 to 7. Yes, they did give up a late touchdown, so no shutout. Rodgers 27 for 38 for 342 yards. Jones at the 100 yards yard mark on the dot it all adds up to a blowout in Green Bay. We're obviously very pr productive in the point production left a little bit on on the field in the first half but the, just the way we played in the third quarter uh, was what we were looking for so I'm very pleased with the victory here at home uh, 11 wins and looking forward to going up to Minnesota. Yeah we got to be playing like this uh, in the playoffs it's nice to get a win like this um, kind of going away and then we got a tough one uh, at Minnesota next week. Bears need a win in Arizona to keep pace with the Packers. Injury is still a problem for Chicago. No Brian Erlacher today. First quarter, Cardinals backed up deep in their own territory. And when that's the case, these things can happen. Beanie Wells fumbles and Zach Bowman recovers the ball and returns it for the one-yard touchdown. Who needs Brian Erlacher? He's pumped for his teammates. Take some more extra looks at this. Wells just kind of falls down on his own. Maybe lost his footing a little bit, but regardless, the Bears getting back to causing turnovers. Hey, that's what they were doing when they were winning games at 7 0. We jump to the second after an Arizona field goal. The Bears are on the move. Jake Cutler finds Brandon Marshall down the sideline. He had a relatively quiet game all the way down to the four yard line, and that leads to this very next play. The give is to Matt Forte. He takes it in for the four yard touchdown. Bears lead 14-3. Now right before halftime, the Cutler to Marshall connection. It's still heating up a little bit, and that's an 11-yard score. 21-6 Chicago at the break. But remember the last time they were in Arizona? The Bears are who we thought they were. 
You got to play the second half. Lovey Smith knows that all too well, especially in this stadium. Second half was fine, though. Third quarter, Charles Tillman intercepts Ryan Lindley. Yes, Ryan Lindley's playing quarterback now for Arizona. A 10 yard pick six, 28 6, and this one is over. Cardinals scored on a blocked field goal. 28 13 is the final. Chicago back on track. Just their second win since early November. But hey, how about the play of that D? Defensively, you know, we asked them to take over and play the way that they've been capable of doing. And, and of course, how we played early, getting, you know, taking the ball away specifically is what I'm talking about. And it was added bonus getting a couple of scores. Julius Peppers, rest of the crew were outstanding. You know, to, for the defense to step up, for other guys to step up on the offense, you know, that says a lot. You know, so I'm proud that, uh, you know, guys were around was able to make big plays, huge plays. And, um, you know, now we just got to go out next week and, you know, control what we can control. So the Packers and Bears, both winners. The other team in the mix in the NFC North is the Vikings. Minnesota came into the day 8-6, and, and they had to travel to 12-2 and two Houston. That and Adrian Peterson is still hoping to track down Eric Dickerson's Seagull season rushing record. J.J. Watt, well, he may have something to say about that or scream about it, you know, whatever he does. First quarter, Christian Ponder finds Kyle Rudolph. And that's a three-yard touchdown pass. Rudolph, the red-nosed tight end, perfect for this time of year. I also like his little touchdown dance he's got for the holidays. 7-0 Vikings lead. Second quarter now, Blair Walsh has had a great year. He's going for a 56-yard field goal. That's not exactly easy. It goes through, sets an NFL record with his ninth field goal of 50 yards or more in one season. That's simply incredible. So no rushing record, but hey, we got a kicking record. A huge play in the third quarter. Fred Evans sacks Matt Schaub on third and goal, and the Texans have to settle for a field goal. These fans are stunned in Houston. Minnesota on the road dominating. We're still in the third. Adrian Peterson. He rips off a nice 20-yard run here. Peterson finished with 86 yards rushing on the day. Not exactly a kind of day he wanted to keep pace with Eric Dickerson's record, but hey, team's winning, right? So what do you have to complain about? We move to the fourth quarter. It's Toby Gerhardt, the other Minnesota running back, the one not chasing a record. He powers his way into the end zone from three yards out. It's 23-6 Vikings, and that's your final. Christian Ponder leads the Vikings into Houston and gets a massive win. No eye-popping numbers, 16 for 30, 174 yards and a score, but the eye-popping results, Minnesota over Houston. And to be able to play in front of our fans at Mall of America Field, you couldn't ask for a better scenario for us. I mean, this is, if you were going to write a script, this is the way you'd want it to be done, where we have a chance to play at home in front of our fans at Mall of America Field against our <laughs> NFC North rival. I mean, uh, we obviously got a big one next week, and if we don't win that one, then this one doesn't mean anything. And, uh, and obviously our number one goal is to make playoffs. Um, you know, we have a 9-6 nine and, uh, nine and six record. Yeah, the 9-6 and six record, uh, triple the wins from last year, but, um, you know, it, yeah, I mean, it's a good thing, but it won't be a good thing if we don't make playoffs. You're in good shape. Don't worry, Christian. Another big game in the NFC also turned into the best finish. Dallas hosting New Orleans, battle of the number nine quarterbacks. We'll start in the fourth. Looks like the Saints were going to end this with ease. Breeze finds David Thomas wide open in a flat for a score. 31-17, it's over, right? Not so fast. The Cowboys mounting the comeback. Just 15 seconds left. Romo, the back shoulder throw to Miles Austin for a 19-yard touchdown on fourth and 10. We're tied at 31, and we head to overtime. Dallas got the ball first, but they couldn't do anything with it. So Saints ball, and here's the crucial play. Marcus Colston is hit by Morris Claiborne and fumbles the ball. It rolls all the way to the Dallas two-yard line, but Jimmy Graham recovers for the Saints. That's the key. Garrett Hartley hits the easy 20-yard game-winning field goal in overtime. The Saints win 34-31. So here's a look at the updated NFC playoff picture. No changes at the top, although San Francisco and Seattle are playing tonight. The Seahawks could shake things up with a win right here. They're actually leading right now. The Vikings in are in at the moment with the sixth seed. That's what Christian Ponder was talking about. Noticeably absent from this is the Chicago Bears. Even with their win today, they still need help to get in. And Dallas and New York, those are the other two teams in the mix. It's been a season to forget if you're a Chiefs fan, but here comes the good news for Kansas City. 
The season's almost done, and why not go out with a bang and play the spoiler role? Chiefs hosting the Colts, and the win for Indy would mean they're in the playoffs in the AFC. And it looked good early. Darius Butler picks off Brady Quinn, and he goes in for the score. Just like that, it's 7-0 Indianapolis Colts. Playing from behind is a familiar feeling, though, for KC. They're down 10-3 in the second. Andrew Luck avoids the pressure and hits Moweldy Moore, he streaks up the sidelines, and with that big game, Luck breaks Cam Newton's single-season rookie passing yards record. That would set up a field goal, so the Chiefs still trail 13-3, but Jamal Charles gave Kansas City some life. We're five seconds into the third quarter. Charles gets free and shows off his speed. 86 yards to the end zone, and there's only one way to celebrate after a run like that. That's why going into the stands with all the fans. Why not? The Chiefs have actually tied the game, but the Colts put it away in the fourth. Luck to Reggie Wayne, and that's all she wrote. The Colts clinch a playoff spot in, in the AFC with a 20-13 win, while the Chiefs have now lost 11 of 12. Uh, until we are able to uh, eliminate some of the things that cause you to lose in this league, uh, it's going to be hard for us to, uh, to win. Uh, we turned the ball over, uh, got penalties at inopportune times, and then gave up an easy touchdown you know, at the end of the game, as well as missed a field goal. So when those kind of things happen, uh, it's hard. Oh, it's been a tough year. Crucial game in the AFC Cincy and Pittsburgh on the 40th anniversary of the Immaculate Reception. Franco Harris on hand for the game, hoping to inspire Steelers team that would be eliminated from the playoffs with a loss. And the turnover bug got the best of Ben Roethlisberger in this one. A pick six in the first quarter, then in the fourth with just 14 seconds left in a tie game. Roethlisberger throws over the head of Mike Wallace near the sideline. It's intercepted by Reggie Nelson. That simply can't happen. And Andy Dalton takes advantage on the road. Just one play, 21 yards to A.J. Green. That puts Josh Brown in field goal range. And he nails the kick, 13-10 the final as the Bengals clinch a playoff spot while the Steelers are eliminated. So with that result, the AFC playoff picture is pretty much set. We know the six teams that will be there, the order still to be determined. Houston still has that top spot despite being tied with Denver now. Cincinnati and Indianapolis are your two wild cards. A couple of former Hawkeyes in the national spotlight today. Some good and some not so good. Scott Chandler, the latter. The Bills tight end was hurt. Well, he hurt his knee actually on this play in the first quarter against Miami. The good news is that he caught the ball. The bad news is he had to be carted off the field. He did not return in this one. No word on if Chandler will play the season finale against the Jets. Speaking of the Jets, that's where we find our homegrown hero. Sean Green had a big day for Big Green. Only 38 yards, but two one-yard touchdown plunges. Just his fifth and sixth touchdowns of the year. That's a big reason why the Jets are not going to the playoffs. Still, a nice day for the former Hawkeye, Sean Green. He's your homegrown hero. Time to pay the bills real quick, but stay with Fox 28 Sports Sunday. When we come back, we'll hit up Cedar Falls. You and I in St. Mary's throwing it down on the hardwood. Highlights right after the break.